Okay, let's talk about the MG ZS EV again. Yes, you guys, but, oh, again, yes. Well, actually, this car, this video is about the, the ZS EV, but also something general about EVs. Yes, so, um, why do it look so, so, oh yeah, there you go, there you go, there you go, that's better. Yeah. <laughs> but okay, so, for you guys who don't know, the MG ZS EV has received five star in the Euro NCAP crash testing procedure recently. It's been all over the news, yes. So if you look at the comparison here, you see that um, in 2017, they crash tested the fossil car and it received only three stars. That was pretty bad. But you know, no one was really talking about it. You know, it wasn't anything uh, special. It was, and by the way, for you guys who don't know, MG ZS EV is owned by Saik, Saik, which is a Chinese company. So they are the one who manufacture the cars. The MG is just the brand, I guess. Yeah, but it's a Chinese car. But it has received five stars. So you see that um, adult occupant has been increased from 71 to 90% and also child occupant has been increased. Uh, but the biggest uh, improvement is the safety assist. So I will come back to that. And you also see that um, the weight of the car has increased by almost 300 kilos. So that's of course bigger battery. And well, actually, I think that's it. Yeah, bigger battery, they've taken out the, the, the engine and the gearbox and put in the, a battery. Uh, so if you look closer at uh, the safety equipment, you see that there hasn't been any big improvements here. You know, they haven't really redesigned the car, but you see that it, they have... Okay, so they added belt uh, pre-tensioner in the rear seats. That, that helps, of course. Uh, other than that, about the same, except for other safety systems on the bottom there. You see lots of uh, automatic braking for cyclists. We'll see some video about it soon uh, in the city. So the car basically, you know, brakes for you in case of emergency. So again, many people, you know, especially when we talk about Tesla autopilot, these naysayers, they will always say that, you know, I want to drive the car. I don't want to rely on autopilot or whatever, but we're not talking about autopilot here. We're talking about emergency braking system in case something happens and, you know, the machine will react faster than humans. So that's a kind of safety feature we're talking about. And of course, there will be times when you're not paying attention and, you know, you want to use some of this. And for people who are allergic to Tesla autopilot, you know, you can turn it off, you know, pro tip, you can turn it off. And not only that, but think about this. Would you buy a car without adaptive cruise control today? A fossil car even? No, you won't, right? You, you want to have adaptive cruise control because when you're driving in congestion, uh, the car will adjust the, 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 the speed for you. And that is one level of autonomy. And then Tesla just takes it one step further. So I really don't know why some people, you know, they hate autopilot, but they use adaptive cruise control. <laughs> yeah, haters gonna hate, right? Okay, let's keep going. And then if you look here at the, the scores, you see that, okay, previously, uh, the, the front passenger, they suffered more, but it's been improved a lot to see, that actually the passenger is now all green. And then the driver, I guess it's because of the steering wheel. Uh, it was pretty bad before, but now it's way better. And as for the rear passenger, that has also been increased. I think it's mainly because of the pre-tension, uh, the, the pre, what's it called again, the belt pre-tensioner. So when, when the car senses uh, an oncoming crash, it will, you know, automatically uh, kind of tension up the, the, the seat belts, which will uh, mitigate the damages. And then as for the other uh, ones there, uh, I'm not sure, 16 points. Uh, actually, it seems like we have a lower score now uh, in the lateral impact and the whiplash has been increased. So that's always good. And then if you follow here with a, uh, follow up with a child, um, what do you call it again? Uh, the what the heck? <laughs> the Hello MG kicked in. I didn't even say MG. Shit. But you see that it was pretty bad before, especially on the head there. Oh, that's red there. So th now it's all green. Superb. <laughs> uh, so I don't know what they actually did. I mean, they, they probably didn't redesign the car or did they? I'm not sure. And then as for um, pedestrian, that one seems to be more or less the same, but uh, you see, uh, but there, this seems to be slightly better on the new version. Maybe that has something to do with the automatic braking, because you'll see in the video uh, that it will, you know, it will brake, and sometimes it will completely brake, but sometimes it will reduce the speed and reduce the, 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 the amount of damage. And then the last one is safety assist. That one, again, you know, had a 
big impact. You see, before it only had uh, speed assistance. I think it's adapt adaptive cruise control, and that's it, the seatbelt reminder. Now it has just scores a shitload of stuff there. So good shit, good shit, yeah. Um, but you know, uh, my point here, back to the point, uh, I was going to talk about the EVs in general because this is the pr prime example that you have a fossil car and then you make it electric. Well, we have plenty of examples like the e-Golf, but unfortunately we don't, well actually, I don't know um, if we have an, actually a, a regular Golf versus the e-Golf. I haven't checked that crash test, but here you see that uh, this is the pole uh, crashing test that uh, the, the fossil car just suffers massive damage versus the, the electric car. So you see, it's just, it's just crazy, right? Why? So I would rather sit in the electric car versus the fossil car. And why is this? Well, it's because we have a big battery pack uh, below and it acts as a very nice protection. We've seen this in Tesla also. So a fossil car has, I guess, nothing under there. Uh, so that massive battery pack helps a ton, but it has to be one of the bigger battery packs because, for example, an e-golf or a leaf, they don't use a big pack. They use a smaller, well, I mean, it's a big, like, um, how do you say it? I mean, it's a big pack, but it's been connected by smaller packs here and there under the seat, under here. But but uh, the trend nowadays is that you have a big pack on the floor, just like in a Tesla. And that one adds extra protection from side impact like here. And another thing is that in fossil cars, you have a big engine and gearbox in the front. And when you crash, um, it can happen that some of that stuff, the engine, parts of the engine, the gearbox, intrudes into the, the passenger cabin and that can cause some damage. Whereas in EVs, you don't have that. You have just a small motor and you have some junction box or whatever. So, you know, you've seen in the past when I open up the, the hood in EVs, it's quite empty there, which is actually pretty good because then you have a nice crumble zone. You want that, that hood, that nose part to absorb the energy so that the passengers and uh, you know, people inside here will, will suffer less from it. So, uh, and of course, uh, the problem that many people, uh, the naysayers will say that, no, oh, but you know, the, the battery pack is explosive, you know, it's gonna catch fire. Well, we have seen in the past now that we have actually very few cases of battery fire. So, um, you, can, you can probably count uh, 10 maybe you know on, in one in two hands with cases of battery fire and then we can start counting the cases of um, fossil fire you know, the, just just to I don't have to prove this you just google about this okay battery electric cars are way safer when it comes to fire versus um, uh, fossil cars so there's been uh, many accidents with electric cars where everything is fine you know when you see when you see Tesla's or EVs crash they're just okay smashed or whatever but they didn't catch fire okay there have been cases of course some dude drove way too fast tesla was chopped in half and it caught fire but that's a different story but uh, my claim is that fossil cars with highly flammable liquid will catch fire way faster so you when once that happened you better get out fast schnell 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 yeah um so again, you know, my point about this video is to show you guys that you take a fossil car, you make it electric, and it actually becomes safer. Yes, yes. <laughs> but the best, best deal would actually be to make an EV from ground up, just like Tesla. Yeah. So Tesla is, yeah, actually, it's not only my claim. It is actually the fastest, I'm sorry, well, true also, the fastest cars, but also the safest cars. Yeah, <laughs> again, the hair is gonna hate. And let's talk a little bit about uh, the MG ZS EV that I'm sitting in that right now. So, um, you know, I was so happy when that happened, when when uh, it scored five stars, because, you know, uh, I needed an, a car in Thailand. The Honda, well, you might not see it here, the Honda back there, which is 20 years old, in mint condition, yes. Amaris dad takes really good care of it, but you know, it has taken it all and I wanted a, a new car So we chose the MG ZS EV because in Thailand I've explained before too many times I don't think I need to explain it again It is by far the best deal here because of import tax from China. No into import tax really uh, So I remember I chose this car and I was thinking I knew about the crash test with the fossil car and I thought okay It only scored three star uh, it might be four stars, 
once they test it, you know, because of the electric, but I actually had no idea it was going to score five star. So, you know, that is good scheisse, yes. Um, and for you guys who are wondering, you know, what do you think about this car, okay? I might make a separate, if you guys are up for it, if you guys still not bored of uh, ZS EV videos, I will make a video where I go through the whole, you know, everything I have experienced with this car so far. Uh, it's been, uh, well, it's been 3,333 kilometers <laughs> as of today. I've taken it on a long road trip to Bangkok. I've done, done some hypermiling. I've been driving around here, you know, I've been charging. And also another thing is that I had no home charging when I was staying in Chiang Mai. Here we have, now we have 6.4 kilowatt. Actually, it's, it's uh, uh, 7.4 kilowatt AC home charging here in Changdao. So that will also be a sub -tip topic if you guys are up for it. You know, how did I survive? Was it hard? It was piece of cake, man. <laughs> yeah, no problem at all. Um, so short, short wrap up with this car, the MG Zeta CV is that I'm super happy with it. You know, it's, when it comes to Europe, it's already out in UK, but, uh, and also it will come out in Norway and I guess other countries uh, around January, February next year. And my prediction is that it's going to sell like hotcakes. It's going to be the new Ionic, but it will be better than the new Ionic. Why? Because they can deliver fast. You know, I asked uh, Frank Meyer, which is uh, the, uh, I think was the director of, uh, Gen oh, I don't remember. He was an executive <laughs> in, in Europe uh, about this. I asked him, what if Norwegians make 10,000 orders, would you guys be able to deliver? He said, well, it would be great if we get 10,000 orders. Uh, Bjorn Nyland from Norway. Uh, so, uh, how many units can you deliver this year to Europe? If necessary, four, four and a half thousand more or less, because they are already being produced and shipped. Okay. Uh, but so if, you, if there's the requirement to increase that, we can also do more. Okay, so if, let's say, 10,000 people order it, Let's, let's hope that, that then I will be very happy because, uh, <laughs> but that, that, I mean, realistically, it's just uh, also looking to the market. We have some time, I mean, the normal customers don't expect that they, they're already used, especially in Norway, to wait for nine or 10 or 12 months on the car. Yeah, exactly. If now they have to wait, I mean, currently, if you order the car now, today, if we ordered it as a, a, the central uh, European headquarter, we get it in about yeah, eight weeks. Okay, good. So there, there is no, that's luckily no issue. Okay, thank you. So basically what he's saying is that whatever people want to do, want to order, you know, Saik, they can produce. They have factory in China and Chinese people, they are good workers. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so, um, you know, in this price range, what can you get? You can get the newest Zoe, 51 kilowatt hour Zoe. That one is more expensive. Or you can get uh, the new Ionic 38.3 kilowatt hours, uh, but that one is even more expensive than Zoe. So this one is cheapest of them all, but it also has five star rating, crash test. It has good space. I've tested it. It has pretty good space. I think the space here can be about the same as uh, an e-Niro or the newest Leaf. You know, it has good space. It has more space than Kona. It has way more space than, um, than um, uh, Zoe. And I even think it will beat Ionic, yes. So space-wise, it's awesome. One minus it, it lacks middle headrest there for the back there. So that, mm, so you just have to know about that one. Um, but tech-wise, this car is just superb when you compare it to the competitors. Uh, it has 44.5 kilowatt hour uh, available energy. And I suspect that, uh, well, it also has a top buffer, so I actually, suspect that the, the, the net, sorry, the gross capacity, the total capacity of this battery pack is about 48 to 50 kilowatt hours. So compare that to Zoe with only 51. Uh, and Ionic is probably around 42, maybe 45, I'm not sure. Uh, let's say 42 roughly, you know. So this one has the biggest battery pack. And then let's talk about charging speed then. Um, on spec, uh, manufacturer claims that it can support 85 kilowatts. 
So far, when I tested in Europe, the battery was not warm enough. I received uh, a little over 50, 60 kilowatt or something. I don't remember exactly. But uh, people in Thailand, here's over, here is hot, you know. One guy reported 68 kilowatt and another guy reported 80 kilowatt. So I guess if I tested it properly, I would probably receive um, 85 kilowatt. So that's way better than uh, Zoe, which can support about 46, 47. And then Ionic. Well, we don't want to talk about Ionic, really. So, Ionic is way slower. So, you know, there, okay. And also, for you guys who don't know, the, the ZS EV has active liquid cooling. Yes, good shit. And what else? Mm, yeah, I think that's it. Um, so, I'm going to leave Thailand tomorrow. And that's going to be it, you know. So, unfortunately, if there is more stuff to test there, I don't have time for it. Uh, I will be able to test uh, the ZS EV in Norway in February next year. Pfft, yeah. So you see, uh, people have been bugging me. Uh, be like, why, 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 when are you going back to Norway? You know, uh, there, some people, they want me to test uh, Tesla or whatever. They don't, they don't want to see Thailand. Yeah, okay. Too bad for you. You guys will regret because now I won't be able to test more stuff with the ZS EV. For example, the charging test or the 1000 kilometer challenge or whatever. Unfortunately, I might come back here again soon. I'll see. So um, I think that's going to be it for now. Yes. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.